Hello everyone, my name is Arno Kadas and today I'm going to explain how flexibility can hurt dynamic matching system performance. This is a joint work with Josu Doncel, Anna Buzik and Jean-Michel Fourneau. And let me first explain what is a stochastic matching model. So this is the fusion between matching in graph theory and queuing theory. So matching in graph theory, because we are going to consider a compatibility graph with nodes and edges, um, and we want to perform a matching on that graph. So this means um, uh, taking pairs of uh, adjacent nodes, uh, such that uh, there is no two pair uh, that share a node in common. And queuing theory, because we are going to assume that there is a, a queue at each node, where items uh, are going to arrive uh, according to a, a stochastic process um, and when the, the uh, we're going to match those items between the different queues at the different nodes uh, and when the match performs the uh, service is instantaneous uh, both items leave the, the system so here is an example of such a model. We have a, a, a graph with four nodes, A, B, C, and D, um, and uh, items that are already uh, in the system, one in, uh, at the queue A and two uh, at the queue C. Um, and so at each time step, uh, a new item arrives to the system. So assume that um, the new item here is going to arrive at the queue B with probability uh, alpha b, uh, then it can be matched with either the, the QA or the QC. Um, and in our work, we are going to assume that uh, uh, there is a first come, first match policy, uh, which means that we're going to match new items with the oldest available one. So here I have noted the order of uh, arrival uh, with numbers um, and so the uh, new item uh, in the QB will be matched with the oldest one which is the uh, first one to arrive in the QA and they will both leave the, the system uh, instantaneously. So our objective uh, in this kind of model is to uh, evaluate the, the performance uh, which is measured by the um, uh, expected total number of items remaining in the system. And uh, we are interested in how this performance will evolve if we add an edge to the system. So here, for example, if we add an edge between the node A and C, how will the, the performance evolve? Uh, because we have observed that uh, in certain conditions, uh, the performance uh, will be actually worse, uh, which is kind of a, a paradox because uh, um, our intuition is that because we are adding an edge, the model is more flexible. We have more available matchings at all times, and so we should have a better performance. But in some cases, it's not the case. Um, and so uh, I'm going to present uh, two of our main contributions. One is a closed form uh, expression for the, the expected total number of items remaining in the system, so the measure of performance. And the second result is sufficient conditions for the existence or the non-existence of a performance paradox. And there are heavy traffic conditions that I will detail later on. Um, so this uh, general stochastic matching model first appeared in the paper of uh, John Meres and Pascal Morel called Stability of the Stochastic Matching Model. Um, and later on, uh, it was proved by um, Pascal Morel, Anna Buzik and John Meres that uh, this model has a stationary distribution, uh, which has a, a product form, and that will be very useful for our results. Um, let me now uh, formally define uh, the model. So we have a connected non-bipartite non compatibility graph G um, with the uh, different uh, classes of items represented by the nodes uh, V um, and the compatibilities between those uh, classes represented by the edges between those nodes uh, called the Xi. We have arrivals of items of different classes following uh, independent 
Poisson processes with rate lambda e. Uh, but after uniformization, we can reduce it to a discrete time model with at most one arrival per time step and uh, with item class distribution alpha. So as I explained uh, earlier, the, the policy uh, that we are going to use is the first come first matched. And under this uh, policy, the dynamics of the system is modeled with a Markov chain uh, W, where a state uh, is represented by a word, where the letters uh, W1 through WQ represent the classes of items remaining in the system um, and uh, in the order of uh, their arrival from left to right. Um, another uh, important notion is the independent set I, which is a subset of nodes uh, such that there is no edge between any two nodes. And um, for the remainder of the talk, we're going to assume the necessary and sufficient conditions for stability, which is that for all independent sets, the sum of the arrival rates um, at the nodes of this independent set are strictly lower than the sum of the arrival rates uh, at all the neighbors uh, of the, the independent set. So we are now ready to, ready to present the, the first main result, which is a closed for formula for the uh, expected stationary uh, total number of items. Um, you don't have to understand in detail uh, this formula. Uh, the main takeaway here is that this uh, formula is um, a finite sum. Uh, however, it's a sum over all independent sets and over all uh, permutations of uh, independent sets. So it can uh, grow quite quickly with the, the size of the, the graph. Um, now to present the, the performance paradox, uh, let me first explain what is the heavy traffic conditions uh, under which uh, we operate. Uh, so I'm going to define uh, delta i, uh, which depends on the different terms of the stability equation uh, inequality you saw earlier. And basically this delta i represents uh, the minimal draining time uh, at uh, the, um, uh, this uh, subset of nodes in the, in the system, so the, the, the nodes belonging to the independent set i. Um, we are going to define also delta bar, which is the minimum over all minimal draining times of uh, all independent set. Um, and uh, we are going to select uh, an independent set i hat, which uh, satisfies this mean, but uh, also that has the highest cardinality among all independent sets that uh, satisfy uh, this mean. Uh, and we are going to, to call it the, the bottleneck set. So the, the next step to this heavy traffic condition is to define a parameterized family of item class distributions called alpha delta, uh, such that uh, the minimal draining time for our bottleneck set is equal to delta, and so we'll tend uh, to uh, zero as uh, delta tends to, to zero. Um, and this is the only independent set uh, um, in that case, uh, all of all of our independent set have a minimal draining time, which will tend to a strictly positive value, as delta tends to zero. Um, and so uh, we are going to also to to define a new uh, compatibility graph where we have added an edge uh, between the node uh, i star and g star. Uh, and now we are ready to, to present the, the main contribution of our paper, which is the uh, sufficient conditions for the existence or non-existence of a performance paradox. So if our bottleneck set uh, uh, i hat has both i star and g star as neighbors, then there exists a performance paradox for delta sufficiently small. And uh, if i hat uh, contains i star or g star, and that they don't have any more neighbors when we are adding an edge to the compatibility graph, then uh, there does not exist a performance uh, paradox for delta sufficiently small. Um, so let me now show an example 
to um, uh, an example of the existence of uh, this performance paradox and also give you more intuition uh, as to when it happens.